Okay, the next example says that firm B currently pays no dividends, but plans to begin paying a $1.35 annual dividend in five years, and they will increase the dividend each year by 1%. If we assume a required rate of return of 15% per year, what is the price of this share of stock? And so now we see that we have our first example of a two-stage or non-constant growth regime. Particularly, we have a regime where uh, the firm is paying no dividends for five years, and then is going to pay a constantly growing dividend, 1% growth rate forever after that. Right? So uh, there is a, a three-step process here that I would encourage you to use to solve these non-constant growth problems. Okay, uh, and uh, and at least until you get comfortable, I, I really, really, really strongly do encourage you to sort of write them down in, in, in steps like this, okay? And of course, the first thing that I uh, will encourage you to do is to make a timeline so that you don't miss any of the cash flows, okay? Because uh, the present value of any share of stock is the present value of its future cash flows. And what we have to do is identify all of the cash flows that are going to happen. Right? And so what we're told in the problem is that the firm will pay no dividends for five years. And then starting in the sixth year, it will begin to pay, uh, or, or starting in the fifth year, it will begin to pay a $1.35 dividend. Okay. Uh, so we have our dividends like that. Uh, we can write down our dividends, so we can say that D0 is 0, and D1 is 0, and D2 is 0, and D3 is 0, and D4 is 0. So for the next five years, it will not pay a dividend, but starting in the sixth year, so D5, it will pay a $1.35 dividend, and it will grow that dividend at a rate of 1% per year. Okay? So before this, the growth rate was zero. It was a zero growth constant dividend of zero. Starting here in year six, the growth rate switches to one, and so D6 should be 1% larger than D5. And we can go ahead and just calculate that out. We can say D6 is D5 times one plus the growth rate, uh, and D5 is $1.35, and the growth rate is 1%, and so we can calculate D6 to be $1.36. Now, we don't have to go on forever here. Uh, we, we just need a couple of dividends after the switch, right? So, uh, and then the last thing we're told is that the discount rate is 15%, okay? So this is all the information we're given in the problem, and uh, I like to start all of these problems by just writing them all down, okay? Now, the three steps. Step one, and this is crucial, step one is identify the place, the time period, Where, the, where the, the regime switch happens, where the dividends switch from being something else, whatever this is, to uh, their final stage, right? And the easiest way to identify this is to identify the time period where the rate changes And of course, the important part is that the rate needs to change forever, right? Because the key part of the dividend sh shift here is that this goes on forever, wherever we have our second stage. Because remember, the first stage could be a growing rate, and then a shrinking rate, and then a growing rate, and then a shrinking rate. So the rate might change more than once, but at some point, we have to hit a second stage where the rate now becomes constant or constantly growing forever. So that's why this forever part is key, right? The question for us is, where does stage one end and stage two begin? Okay. So what we're looking for is 
and, and I think this is helpful, what, what you're looking for is basically the tick mark on your timeline right, where the growth rate changes forever. Right? This is the time period that you're looking for. Okay, so in the first year it's zero, in the second year it's zero, in the third year it's zero, in the fourth year it's zero, in the fifth year it's zero, but in the sixth year it's one. So in between five and six is when the change happens and that's in year five, okay? And that's it for step one, right? Step two is we're gonna use the dividend growth model to estimate, right, to find the present value of all the dividends that occur after the time period you identify in step one. Now this is kind of, can be kind of confusing, right? But the general idea is that we have an infinite number of dividends into the future, right? We have here D zero to D infinity, right? That's how many dividends this stock is, we're assuming this stock is gonna pay. I can't take the present value of all of those unless I use one of my models, namely the dividend growth model. The dividend growth model allows me to condense all of these infinite number of dividends down into a price that I can actually understand. Now, when we're doing this uh, two-stage model, what, I end up, what I'm going to end up needing to do is to take some of these present values by hand and then hopefully use the model to save myself the rest of the time. So step two says, I know that I can't that the dividends are not constantly growing for the entire period, but I can, so I can't use my dividend growth model for the entire time period, but I can use the dividend growth model for the time period where they are constantly growing, which is this, right? So from the sixth dividend to the infinity, uh, to infinity, the growth rate is a constant rate. And so I can use my dividend growth model to capture the value of all of these dividends, right? So I can say that if the present value today, the price in time period zero is equal to the present value in time period zero of D1 divided by R minus G, right? The important part here in mathematics is that the time period at which we want to use the model requires the following period's dividend, right? So what we would say is this can be used at any time t right? So we could rewrite this as the present value at time period t is equal to the dividend at t plus 1 divided by R minus G, okay? So I can use this model at any time period. I just need the next period's dividend to be there. So I can use the present value at time period five because that's where the regime switch happens is equal to the sixth dividend divided by R minus G, okay? So that is $1.36 divided by 15% minus 1% or 9.7143. Now, step three, step three says, finish the problem essentially. Take the present value 
of all the remaining cash flows. at time period zero. And so this is going to be every dividend before the time period we identified in step one and P5. Right. Or this was P5. Right. So let me try and demonstrate what we just did, right? What these three steps are attempting to do. So here's all the cash flows into the future. All right, we have D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8, D9. We have D100 and D1000 and the infinite dividend, right? Because all these dividends are not constant or constantly growing, right? There is this regime switch right here. I can't use my model. So I'm gonna have to take the present value of these dividends one by one. Right? Unless I can identify a point where I can use my model to save myself a little bit of time. And that point is right here, in between uh, where the uh, uh, in between where the growth rate changes, right? So essentially, what I'm doing here is I say we say that if these first periods don't exist, then the periods after the fifth period could be uh, valued. All the dividends after the fifth period could be valued using the dividend growth model. So we pretend that they don't exist in order to get a value for all of these at that point in time. That's what P5 represents. Then I'm left with only six cash flows. The first five dividends, which I am gonna to have to value one by one, and this fifth cash flow that represents all of the dividends that would come after uh, time period five. Okay. Now, in this case, of course, it, ha it just so happens that the first five dividends are all zero, right? because the firm pays no dividends. And so ultimately we only have one cash flow, which is this P5, 9.7143, right? Now, of course, this is just to uh, make our first example easier on us. So we could easily have dividends here that we would have to take the present value of one by one, but we only have one step left, which is to take the present value of, oh, sorry, there is a dividend here, D5, D5. All right, I don't want to forget that D5 also has a dividend. Uh, D5 has a dividend of $1.35. So I have two cash flows, the fifth dividend and all the dividends that come after. So the present value today of the dividend in year five, all right, we want to solve for the present value. We can do all this with our calculator. The future value is the value of the cash flow. That future value happens, that cash flow happens five years in the future. IY is our required return. Which is 15%. We compute the present value and we get 0.6712. And then the second cash flow is P5. Right? And present value is what we're solving for. Future value is the value of the cash flow, 9.7143. N is five years in the future. Again, the subscript here is what's gonna tell you you're in. IY is the required return of 15% and the present value is 4.827, okay? So our final step then is to calculate the price. And the price is the sum of the present value of the future cash flows. So we just add these two things together. 0.6712 plus 4.827 gives me a price for this share of stock of $5.50.